Okay, first brand is Pat's Risers. Now, Pat's Risers offers high quality, affordable skate essentials. Like, obviously, risers. You got angled risers. You got foot stops. You got drill guides to manipulate your wheelbase. Insert bushings and other accessories. So I actually have a bunch of Pat's angled risers that I use. They're really solid. They're high quality. Not only are they creating a good product, but they're supporting good people in the community and they're driving it forward. So yes, Pat's risers. If you need any accessories, check them out. Moving on, we got Foster Skateboards, which was established in 2009 and is based in Seattle, Washington. Now, this is another company that supports a bunch of riders that are really deeply ingrained in the longboard community that really care about it, that want to see it grow. Honestly, my favorite board that I'm probably going to get from them eventually, purchase from them, is the Fingy. It's this really cool cruiser type board. I have a feeling like it would be so fun in a park scenario, like a bowl. That's just something that kind of sticks out to me in my riding style. But they also have, I believe, downhill free ride and even like a street or transition deck. So have a look at Foster Skateboards, really cool company, and they give a lot to the community. Alrighty, moving on. We got Flush Collection. Now, Flush Collection is interesting because, I mean, if you just look at the photos, you're like, bro, like this is incredible. These are beautiful. They are made with quilted maple, but uh, Chris, who's the founder of Flush, he's going to be offering a bunch of shapes that aren't just quilted maple because quilted maple is super expensive. But I mean, dude, just ugh, look at these things, bro. I would say keep an eye out this spring for when Flush goes public, I believe. Um, probably just makes sense to follow them on their Instagram account, but their website, you can also put in your email and once they go live, you'll get notified. All right, moving along here, we got Whitetail Skateboards. Now, Whitetail Skateboards started by Sophia, a lifelong skater and artist based in Canada. In my opinion, she's been kind of leading the way as far as like innovative surf skate shape decks. She's doing these really cool collaborations with, I'm thinking of like Mark from Landlock Surfer. They both have this really cool cross hybridization style of like transition street surf skate. Like they're doing really cool things with the shapes. You can tell she's so passionate about it. They're quality boards. If you're in the market for like a surf skate transition street deck, definitely check out Whitetail. Moving on, we got Deviate. Board Co. Now, Deviate is founded by James in Brooklyn. So you can actually see behind me, he made me like this vintage cruiser. I'll probably overlay something right now so you can get a better look. But yeah, he's, he's just making these beautiful long boards that are high quality. He's pursuing his passion. And uh, this is a company I would definitely recommend to check out and support. Cool part about Deviate is that if you do not see a shape that you like, he has a custom order page and you can kind of describe your vision and he'll make it come to life. Moving on, I have mentioned this and I've made videos on this company in the past, but I just, I still want to highlight them because I think they're such a great company with a great mission, with a great product. <laughs> that is crazy. Um, Lander, Lander LA. If you have tripophobia, believe that's what it's called. Probably not going to like this. These decks kind of exist in like the penny board cruiser realm. I recently went on a trip and I, I took their Rio deck. I believe it is. It was so easy just to stash away under my airplane seat as a, like a carry on, like no one said anything. It was just like super portable, so lightweight. But what I really love is the sustainability approach. The decks are made out of recycled fishing nets. I know I've said a bunch about Lander in previous videos how much of a fan I am, but I'm just gonna still say it because I think they're great. All right, next we have Vibe Ride Longboard Break. Now, Vibe Ride has been controversial. Maybe not even trying to be controversial, but they remind me a lot of how Shark Wheels 
and ghost longboards, those clear longboards have been received by the core market, I guess you could say. And in my opinion, that has been a result of some gimmicky marketing. It's definitely gotten better over time, but I think some of their videos that they ran as ads targeted the wrong market, targeted more of like the downhill space when it really should have been targeting beginners. Now there's a lot to unpack here about this break, but in my opinion, and I might make a separate video on it going more in depth. Most people I think are afraid to even step on a longboard because they're envisioning stepping on, going down a hill, getting speed wobbles and getting destroyed. So I think this is a net positive because it's getting more beginners, more people feeling comfortable to longboard. And the more people that get into this industry, the more opportunity to funnel into other disciplines like dancing, like downhill, like freestyle, like surf skates. Maybe it's not promoting the exact right fundamentals of actually to prevent speed wobbles, you have to put your weight forward on your front foot and not your back. You could go and analyze all these little things about it. My stance on it is that I think it's a net positive because it gets more people in this industry. We're getting some controversy here. All right, so moving on, then we have Finless Skate Co. Finless is a pretty unique angle to longboards. Like it's your standard pintail uh, surf inspired cruisers, right? But they just have this unique approach where it's like very vintagey, surfy. Like to me, anything that's like surfy feeling, like surfing's one of my favorite things to do. So I don't know. I, I think they're making like it's it's quality stuff. They're using Paris trucks. They're making their own decks. The wheels are solid. And uh, yeah, I think this is another brand that maybe someone's deciding between, oh, do I support a brand that's owned by a corporation that, you know, that no one in the company actually skates or do you buy a similar product like Finless that actually cares, that's, that's run by a dude who actually cares about this space, who's actually gonna give back to it. And, and um, yeah, they're doing some really cool things where they're making specifically branded boards for local surf shops. And so th that's a cool thing. Any way to incorporate and promote local to support your local shop is always cool. So yeah, check out Finless. Then we have an electric skateboard company, Defiant Board Society. Now this is a premium top of the top brand. And I would still say like, I'm really not as versed at, in the electric space as I am in say maybe surf skate, cruiser, longboard, whatever. But what I do know is the guy who started this, Damien, he started, I believe is the biggest electric skateboard forum. Like just the simple fact that he built this e-skate forum with the goal of sharing knowledge, of sharing the overall electric skateboard e-skate scene, that deserves for me to recognize this brand in itself. I mean, if you just take a look at these boards, that these are buttes. These are absolute buttes. All right, and last but not least, we have another electric skateboard company called Build Kit Boards. Now, this is a unique take on the DIY electric scene. To me, there's like two sides of the spectrum. It's like you either go full DIY, like you build your own batteries, you put everything together, or you have like the Revel kits, the Max Find kits that are pretty limiting. Like you can use your own deck, but like it's pretty limiting. And then to me, build kit boards is like this cool in between where you're getting quality parts from what I understand, but it's still DIY-ish. I would definitely recommend checking BKB build kit boards uh, out. I believe they are based in New York, Brooklyn, somewhere, I maybe not Brooklyn, I, I could be wrong. I really wanna know how you guys feel about this format. Um, give me suggestions for other formats too. Like there are a bunch of topics, ideas that I have in mind that I'm just gonna go boom, 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 boom. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. I do enjoy this. Like this is so much easier for me to create and I don't know if people find value in this, 
but I'm just gonna continue to explore and figure out how to make this a sustainable living while adding value. And uh, yeah, see you guys in another one.